Hi. Good thing and you? Yeah, um, not not different news from the last last week. Um, as you know, we had some players on the bench last last game because they were not uh, fully fit for the 90 minutes, of course. But good to see some of them um, coming back and training with the uh, with the team. We have a slight doubt uh, on William. Um, João did all the week with uh, with his teammates as well. Not big difference from the last last week. I think everyone understands that should have been our priority last last month, a month and a half ago. Imagine now, of course, we and um, seven players left our football club in the end of the season. We we sold a, uh, another player that was Mitrovic, is Mitrovic as well. Of course, when you left seven players, another one that we have we sold, and we just signed three players. I think it's clear for everyone how many players we need. And that we are really late in, in this aspect, definitely. A top striker must be on the agenda. Uh, I'm expecting to give us any names, but what type of striker do you think would best fit to replace someone like Mitrovic who has such an emphasis? When you are in the market, and not just about the striker, I understand, of course, when you look for, for, our, for our squad last season and for the 11 that play more, more time, of course, we, we lost one, one player until now. Of course, that is, is Mitrovic. All the other players, they were not always a starting level players. Manor had an impact, of course, and the other players, they helped really for our um, great season. But um, looking for our the, play, the players that play more in starting level, of course, we lost the strike. But we have much more positions to cover. And I don't want just to put the, the fate and the, all the focus in, in a striker position. Even if it was a player that we sold, when you need so many things to do um, in the market um, for the last seven, eight days. It's not a normal situation. Yes, it's not. If I would like to be completely different, yes, like all the managers in the world, I believe. Um, about the striker, we if you are going to sign any striker, it has to be the right one. It has to be someone to come uh, to have an impact in our, in our squad with conditions to help us, really. And this is the main thing for me. I, I don't want to sign players just to sign, to be honest. Even if you need numbers, you need clear numbers. Um, in terms of squad, um, our squad last season was short. This season is even even more. And of course, we need to, to sign players, but we have to sign the right ones. Players just to, to be numbers, we don't want. We want players to come to help really the, the, the players that we have already. You mentioned obviously your team was short last season. For various reasons, <coughs> you know, I think Jim and Richard were serving his time. You still managed to get through the season. Landing yourself a great position at the table. Similar to this season, you mentioned that fact that you're quite short with players. What is it about the mentality that the players have to collect and to store and to keep it going and keep that energy going within the squad? Now we have a, a great group of players that they they are giving always their maximum for the shirt and they are good, they have been good, top professionals. Of course, in in in, in some aspects, uh, some things this. This past season is being different than the last one, but it's normally something for me to to sort out and to to put in the right track. And but as a, as a players, as a dressing room, their commitment, their attitude, and the team spirit and the quality to fight for the the shirt is being is being there always since I joined the football club. Last season was was impressive. Uh, all the credits to to them as well. Of course, as as all the teams, we want always to improve. All the squads we want to improve, and they they need the uh, players to help them to be stronger. Two different games. Um, going back to the to the Brentford game, I have spoken uh, enough, but I can mention again. Of course, it was not a, um, a good performance for ourselves. Of course, balanced game first half. We we gave one goal away. We gave clear the goal for for Brentford to score the, the one nil, and um, of course, the leading the score at half time gave them the, the confidence. Second half for me, um, the wrong decision from the referee, completely wrong decision from the referee when. Uh, um, then they gave them the, the penalty and the red card for us. And of course, in that moment, almost closed the game. And uh, 
first off, clear that we were not at our level. We game balance really did it tell me the difference in that goal. Second off, good reaction from ourselves and a clear and obvious mistake from the referee gave the chance for Brentford to score and um, put us playing in, with, with 10 men. It's important to, to be clear with the situation. Of course, I knew after the match when I saw the images. During the week, we got the feedback from the people that is in charge that is, is a, not a penalty at all. We didn't need really because I can see with my eyes it's clear just the ref is so completely different than VAR um, did, did the same or didn't take the, 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 the decision from the, the, the referee that was a error. But okay, can happen, I can make mistakes as well. The referee did the same. Uh, but Arsenal will be a different game. Not a cottage, will be away against the top side, as you said. Um, a side that they have, okay, they have been from a great, great season. Of course, they, they weren't the champion, but the way they, they fought to be champion last season, the way they played, everything what they did last season was impressive, was really, really good. Uh, credits for them. And they were able to improve the squad with very good signings and more than that, in the right timing. You can see that they, they have a plan. And they execute the plan clear because the, when they signed, not just because they signed Declan, they signed Arras as well, they signed Timber, they signed a good number of players and they, they signed them in, in a timing that gives a chance to them to, to plan the season and to prepare the season and to be in the press season with, with his teammates. For me, it's clear, there's a plan there and more than the plan because the plan can be there, but they execute well the plan. Of course, I believe that will be even a stronger Arsenal this season. Roger. Hi, Martha. Hi. Hi. Um, you talked before about uh, replacing Mitrovic, not just about going out and buying a player, but buying the right type of striker and so on. Um, would someone like Moise Keane or Timothy Castagne be the right type of striker? No, Moise Keane is not a, a solution for us, but uh, as a... Uh, as I have been told you, um, I don't like to speak about players that they are not our players. Moskin is a, a player from Juventus. I, I, I just want to clarify this, this situation. Uh, but no, um, I will not talk about players that they are not our players, but I can confirm to you that it's not uh, the player that you are looking for. And, and uh, to the standard then? Uh, okay, you can mention out 10 players. I will not mention, I just... Uh, is uh, something that I want to tell you about this player, about players that they are Moiskin, uh, Castanha and other players. I will not mention the players from the other clubs. You talked before about Arsenal, obviously your, your next opponents, about um, it's quite clear they have a plan and they executed the plan. Is it easier for a club like Arsenal to, to have a, a definite plan and be able to execute it, whereas Fulham, perhaps it's more difficult to, to bring the players in that you necessarily want, as, as you've seen, you're short of the players that you want at the moment. Is it a harder job for you? I don't want to to compare because even it's not enough. You know, we are talking about two different clubs and all, all that stuff. I just mentioned because I think it's it's clear for me that the plan was there and they they executed really well and uh, on the right timing to to prepare the season to start the st season strong again. Because as I know, they know as well how it's important to start Premier League strong. Um, as I know and they know as well, it's really important to prepare the pre-season with, the, with the, the, the right timing for the players to have time to gel and all that stuff. Um, and OK, cannot compare. Cannot compare one thing with the other because all of us, we know that is, there are different things, the, the power and all that stuff to go, to go in the market. You said on the back of um, everything Arsenal did last, last season, you think they could be stronger um, this time round. But their first couple of matches, they obviously won, but I think in both matches that they will run pretty close as well. Do you think it's perhaps a, a good time to be meeting them right now? Well, they perhaps haven't. Fully hit their stride yeah. um, They are different games. Of course, the first game they started really well. They they they, they started leading the score. Of course, they managed the game. Second game was was different. Uh, they were able even with ten man to to keep the clean sheet. To as as Mikel said, is a good way to win a football match as well. They showed the the resilience, the organization to um, to keep the clean sheet and to be able to win the game from the penalty. Shot, but they won. They won the game. This is the the main thing. And each game is is has a, his own story, and of course they want to 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 win again for sure. You want to to have a reaction from the last game. You spoken today about the about the red card the other day, and you spoke after the match, and you and you said um, it take a while perhaps to get used to the way some of the rules are being implemented this season by by the Premier League. Is that something you can work on on the on the training pitch? And how do you go about adapting 
to the way rules are being being enacted so far this season. It will be difficult, even if you want to to adapt and to prepare the players in the in the training ground. It will be difficult because you have to to see some consistent in in some in some things. Um, the the penalty against us is a good example. Where is the consistent there? Because most of the times, 95 percent of the times is never a penalty that moment, and uh, it's difficult to understand after where where comes the the consistent in this type of situations. But of course, we have to adapt. It's something that we we knew. We had some meetings during the pre season with the, the people that is in charge of this. The rules or the changes as well, and uh, I expect it, and I, I mentioned as well. Probably is a, is a new way to to run the matches. Probably the change is too big, in my opinion, for the for everyone to be adapted, players and the referees as well. And you are you are seeing already, I think seven seven red cards in in two weeks. Uh, as an average, you can see how, how big is the number, and and uh, let's see how how, how it. Uh, how it goes in the next few few weeks, but um, it will be no, not easy for us to to simulate the reality on the, on the training ground every single day, even if it's our job to try to do it. Um, obviously, the, the red card had a big influence on the way the match went the other night. But you've had two matches so far. What have you seen from your team so far that has pleased you, and also do you think areas that definitely need need addressing? Um, you still have many things to address, definitely. As uh, it's not an excuse because I don't like to find excuses. I'm here to find the solution, not excuses. Our pre-season was not at. at uh, I would like to to have a pre-season to prepare to prepare a team to to this competition. It wasn't for many reasons. One of the reasons why the big number of injuries that we had uh, were not able to uh, to prepare to prepare our backline the way I, I would like. We we did most of the games with. Uh, a young lad, 17 years old, at our at our back line and all that stuff is not. It was not a, a normal precision. Things that we should clear to and you have to improve is about our consistent, our focus to don't to don't be slop in some moments of the the game like we we showed the last two good things that we have to keep showing. Of course, we we did show first game some quality in our attack line that we have. Of course, we want to create more chances, more shots on the on the target as well. Is the the two things clear that we have to improve. And you did bring in a few new players, as you mentioned, um, like Calvin Bassi came to the bench. Are they ready to, to start matches now, particularly with, with Tim Reeve being... No, he's ready to start, of course. Uh, I would like to, to give more time for him to adapt for our reality again. He didn't do the pre-season, just last week of pre-season, the, the, the game against the uh, off a nine. But of course, he's ready to play and he's going to start. <coughs> Hi, Marco. Hi. Arsenal have been so impressive over the last 18 months, but, but why is that? What, what is it, what they do on the pitch, what impresses you the most? No. Clear answer. First, of course, uh, Mikel is doing a very good job at this moment uh, to, to, to adjust things. I think one season, one season and a half to adjust things, to start to, to understand what you want to do with the teams. He did some adjustments in the, in the, in the squad last season was at very, very good level, not just the results, but the way they did it as well, the way they played. Um, this season, they were able again to to adjust and to improve their, their, their squad. That was at very good level already. And OK, he's, he's one of the, the the best teams in the in the competition. Definitely, they showed that last season. And I believe, like I said before, that they're going to show again uh, this season. And this is a tough team, even at home, even more, because the, you know what is going to happen, all the all that support. Is, it will be a good challenge for us. It will be a good challenge. We want to show a reaction as well from the last game. And uh, playing uh, against Arsenal away from home is always a very good challenge. Is it about how important is it for you to keep a clean sheet if you want to get anything from the game? It is important, but we know, we, we know as well that normal Arsenal, I don't know how many how many games they, they, they didn't score last season, for example. That means if you are always thinking into to keep a clean sheet and you are not able to create some chances will be will be difficult for you to get a good result because normal I would I would love to don't consider that means that we, we are going to be really strong. You are going to be to show the, the compactness that last game in some moments you uh, you didn't. But of course at the same time you have to when you have the ball you have to look for for their goal. You have to try to create chances because it will be really important for us to, to score. Is that their best area, the front three, the attacking sort of front um, forward line? Is that what impresses you the most about them? No, it's difficult for the, the, the front line to be able to to score and create chances. Everything is coming from from the back for the players. When when he sign when they sign 
two players that they went direct for their 11. Well, I'm talking about Declan Rice and Harvards means that they, they reinforced really well the, the midfielder line because it's clear, of course, they lost Chaka, but um, two players that they signed, they come direct for the, the 11, the first games of the season. That shows the impact that two players they they, they have in their squad so so far. And it's really important. It's difficult to say that it's just front line. I understand the two wingers, they have, they have the skills, they have the quality, one v one, they are they are impressive both. Of course, even in the absence of Jesus, Nekitia is doing really well as well. He's always been a, a very good solution for them. But of course, with the triple players in the middle, even the the way they build, let's see if they come or not with Chivchenko um, for this game that can give something and more quality even in their build-up. And we have to be ready for everything. And you are without your captain, but how much an absence will that be? It's, it's, it was a really important play for us last two seasons, of course. And uh, he started the, the season not in his best shape because, as you know, he broke his arm and the, the, he just uh, had eight minutes in the, the pre-season friendly. Of course, was not at, at the best, but he's coming for his best. Unfortunately, he got that head card unfair and wrong decision. I have to repeat again. OK, he's not going to play. It will be, it will be the chance for Calvin to come in. Um, Hi, Marco. Um, uh, how much are you going to miss Alexander Mitrovic? Uh, I, you asked me last week about Mitrovic, but enough after the match, and I said after the match that from that moment is going to be to be finished. I will not answer nothing more about Mitrovic because it will be a, a lack of respect with the players that I have in our squad right now. I mentioned how he was important for me, and the relationship that we have will be forever, will not be just because I was in Fulham. How we were important for him since I arrived in this football club, um, the way we help him to to go for the level, the way he understood my my idea, and after he executed that, but now is is the finish for for me to at Fulham. We have to look for the players that we have to improve them and to give all the confidence for them. From last week, uh, after the match when it was official, I will not answer any questions more about Mitrovic. Where are the goals going to come from in his absence? About Mitrovic, I will not answer. But where are the, who, who's going to score your goals? Um, you know our strikers? Or who they are? Okay. If you want, about, you want to talk about strikers, we have three strikers, it's to come from them. If you want to talk about our forward players, it's to come from them too. You, you've described the kind of player you want to bring to Fulham, yes. and I would imagine that every other club will want to buy that player. I'm yes. just wondering how how big your job is as the manager here to persuade the player to choose Fulham over any other club? With more time, with more time, it will be more, less difficult. Right now, at this moment of the market, I have to tell you that it's really, really difficult. It's really difficult. And this is the problem when we let the things for the last week of the market. It's always a problem when we left the things to go, to go, to go for the last seven days of the market and after you are in, not in the best position. I'm 100% sure, even if we lost an important player for us, with the time, because the plan was there and it was clear, with the time we are able to, to, to sign a player that can help us. Right now, we are doing the maximum, we are doing a, a big effort to do it. Let's see if it's going to be possible. Do you get the impression then that the club hadn't started looking for Mitrovic's replacement until it was confirmed that he was leaving. Please don't don't keep talking about Mitrovic. I think is is the, the enough about about Mitrovic right now. Okay. Um. Sorry. Can you just clarify? You said that since the Brentford game, you've actually had it confirmed that it shouldn't have been a penalty. Yes. So they they said to you that shouldn't have been a penalty. Yes. yes. So I mean, what can you do about that? After we cannot do nothing. We cannot do nothing. But they just confirmed to me what I saw, and probably. 80% of the people saw in that match uh, at Cottage last, last Saturday. J it was just a confirmation because, um, of course, during the match, it's difficult for me. When I was in the bench, of course, I have to be honest with you, it's impossible for me to see it. Of course, we have to, to believe in the decision. Of course, all our players that they were around and even Tim Rin that was involved, he was really surprised with the decision. They were really surprised, all the players around. The decision came. Really difficult to, to understand, even if they are going to say, OK, it was not obvious, always for the VR to take, to take the decision for me was clear and obvious. And we got in confirmation that it wasn't, wasn't a penalty clear. Yeah. Uh, finally, for me, just on the subject of Arsenal, you know, not a, never a great time to play them away from no. home, but at the moment you must be thinking the challenge is even tougher than, than ever. It's, 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 a, it's a tough, it's a tough, a tough challenge always. I remember last season when we went to play against them, 
wasn't in the third game of the season, was in the fourth game of the season. We went to um, to play against them. Probably in the, in the slide, okay, we went with five points. Now we have three points in the fourth game of the season. Okay, this type of this type of things can 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 happen. Of course, you come from a bad result. I would love to have the, the, the squad complete, to have everything, to have the players to work with. It's not possible, wasn't possible until now. I have to focus on the players we have, the solutions we have to go. And these are players that they can make an impact in the game, they can make the difference for us. Again, they are going to fight for the shirt as well. And this is my focus on them. I won't mention Mitrovic. But you can mention, I will not answer to you, no problem. <laughs> Um, there's a sale of your number nine. Uh, show that maybe <laughs> is, a, is a different way to go in Mitrovic, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a sale of your number nine. Show the, the difficulties the transfer window has when it's still going and the season started. We we had this conversation, I think, four years ago when, uh, for the first time, um, Premier League decided to um, to finish the market before the first game of the season, and of course. All of us that we analyzed, we we had the impression, and um, and we of course we made some conclusions about that. That wasn't wasn't fair for us. If in, I'm not talking about the world, but in the rest of the Europe, the market will still open until the end of August, and we are in risk because we close our our squads, but the other clubs they can come to buy. Was a decision again to keep until the end of August, and I I have to tell you that to be in this way, I believe, even if I agree what, and I understand your question. But of course, if the other markets they don't, they don't close before, why we are going to close? Because all is, is, is a big risk. Imagine the, the, that we, for some reason, and it will be a big surprise, but for some reason, before the, the, um, the our Everton match, we close our squad, we have our close, uh, squad complete, and in Europe, uh, the market is going to be open until the end of August. Any club can come here to buy a player from ourselves, or possible to try to buy a player from ourselves, and we are going to be in a difficult decision. It's, it's, it's not an easy decision, and I, I think Premier League decided well in that situation. But it leaves you eight days to replace somebody who is almost irreplaceable. But this is okay. This is another situation. This is another situation. Of course, we um, we had some targets for that position clear, and of course, ten days ago, fifteen days ago, they were. They were there for us to try to get. Still there, two, three solutions that we we are trying. Of course, as I told you, uh, my full focus right now is in Raul, uh, Rodrigo and, and Vinicius to work with them, to get the best from them. Of course, when we, 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 saw, we sell a player and and the player that we sold, try to go in, in a direction to, to replace him. And we are trying to do that. I, I know what I want for the team. Let's, go, let's, be, let's see if it's going to be possible. Yeah. Talking of Raul Jimenez, um, He's not been the same player since that injury at Arsenal. Yep. He goes back to Arsenal this weekend. Is he is he okay with that? I mean, I know he's played at the Emirates since the incident. Yes, he already played. But yeah. it's, it's still something which must be going through his mind. I haven't spoken with him about about it. I think um, he just reminded me that uh, that was in that in, in that game. Um, but uh, from the injury and the, everything what's happened with him, Old is 100% fit. It's not even to think. You can you can see the way he fights, the way he had the ball, the way he goes out in all the moments, the way he, he, he fights, and the way he's going to keep fighting for for us is is, is not an issue for him. Of course, he like all the strikers in his goals, he needs to score goals. He needs to be to feel important. He needs to feel the love around him to to go because not just him, all the strikers. And we had good example last two seasons here because he felt the love. He felt everything around him. will make him. You made him important, and now we have to make the others important as well to give the the, the, the confidence for the, the confidence for them to to score goals because at the end they need. Even if a, a striker role uh, in our in our ID is much more than score goals, I know for them it's really important to score to boost their confidence. Two more, very quickly. Um, you're not worried about this season. I mean, a lot of Fulham fans in the last week will have become a little bit worried about the season. Just to clarify, you're not worried. You're, you're okay with. I I understand your question. Of course, the fans um, the fans they look for for everything and they analyze. They they like first of all they like their his team to to win football matches. Of course, we 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 won against Everton and I was the first one saying to you that wasn't everything perfect. Far from that. Far 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 from that. Um, and after that we lost the last game. I'm not in panic too. I'm not in panic too. I know what we need. 
and the club knows what what I want for the squad since last May. Uh, we are trying, to, we are trying to to do because Premier League is really tough. And I I said last season and the end of the season that, that we cannot stand still because if you think that is enough, will be the first step for you to do mistakes and to be in trouble. I don't want to be. I want to the best for this football club, for the fans, for our players as well. I'm here to to demand from everybody to to support to support in in, in the situation. Of course, you can see that. The, the squad is far to be complete. It's far to be complete. We are doing something really important during a competition. Is not during a pre-season. Like, looks, you are in a pre-season, but you aren't. The Premier League already started. Uh, but uh, what we probably is, is, is too strong. I'm not. I'm confident. I, I'm confident that, that we have to get. We have to get, and I, I have to get the support to get the players that we need inside. We have a, a group of players really, really humble, ambition. They proved last season their, their quality. Just we need the right people inside to help them to, to do a very good season again. Finally, I know you don't like talking about the former number nine or other TV <laughs> players. So could a re- replacement, it's just coming to my head, <laughs> could a replacement for your centre forward who's left be Romelu Lukaku at Chelsea? <laughs> he's a Chelsea player. I have to repeat again. Okay, but he's a Chelsea player and you have to, to, to ask for Chelsea this situation. Okay, I don't, I don't know even if he's, he's in the market or not. He's a, he's a Chelsea player. Of course, I know that he's not involved in the squad, all that stuff, but he's not, I'm not talking about players from the other teams. Sorry. No, fair enough. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Nice to see you. And you. Thank you. Um, that's the broadcast section completed.